What's it take to turn this rock right here into power for hundreds of thousands of people? We're about to show you. Welcome to the Adarat Mine, located south of Amman, Jordan's capital city. We're visiting today with Near East Equipment, Jordan's premier Komatsu dealership. Now what the heck is oil shale? Well, it's just as it sounds, rock with oil inside of it. Thanks to its high energy content, Adarat Mining Company can mine it and transform it into energy within a nearby 470 megawatt power plant. Now let's head into the mine to see it up close. Okay, so we did 24 hours of travel. We flew to Amman, Jordan. We had a, an amazing dinner last night downtown and now today, we are out here at this oil shale mine, our own BCM and uh, Amco are the companies that operate this operation here. And this is the good stuff. It's oil shale, so it's essentially this rock with oil mixed into it. They're mining it with these loaders like that Komatsu WA900. They're hauling it to a primary crusher. They're crushing it, conveying it to the plant, and then they're burning it for power. This entire operation is responsible for 15% of Jordan's power, so it's extremely valuable stuff. It's very, very cool because it's also lightweight, similar to coal, so all of the truck bodies are built up, and I think at most, these are 100-ton trucks. They're getting between 70, 80 tons a load, so not even close to overloading these trucks. Pretty sweet. So we're gonna check out this whole operation today. They're mining the oil shale from different locations within the pit, and that's because it needs to be blended. It doesn't all have the same concentration of oil within it. And so they're pulling a little bit from here, pulling a little bit from there, and sending all these trucks up to a stockpile and to the crushers so that they're mixing this material while they're crushing it and sending it to the plant so that when it arrives at the plant, it's at least more consistent and so that it can burn consistently and produce power consistently. Just one more fun fact. All of the machines are equipped with additional cooling packages because during the summer on this black material gets so hot that the machines without the cooling will overheat. After a spectacular morning watching WA900's load trucks, we headed to the shop for a closer look. Because the oil shale is lighter in weight, they want to try to add as much to that body as they can so they can fit as much material in there as possible because they can't overload the truck no, ma no matter how much they put in there. So they've built it up, not just uh, one 20 meter, 20 centimeter section, but two 20 meter sections. So it gives it uh, over a foot for you Imperial folks, a foot more on the side of the bed to fit as much of that oil shale in there as possible. 
Another thing, because the oil shale is so brittle, it breaks apart, turns to a super fine dust, which gets into all of the moving parts on every machine. So they have automatic grease setups on all their trucks, all their loaders, everything out here to prevent everything from wearing out prematurely because of that super fine but abrasive dust that's everywhere. This is one of three WA900s they have loading the oil shale. This is a 13 cubic meter bucket. For you Imperial folks, we'll put the conversion up on the screen here. Uh, right above me, you'll see two GPS antennas. That doesn't just help the loader position itself, but it actually has machine control. The, the bench elevations are really, really important because every elevation has different value, heat energy value of the oil shale. So they have to keep the elevation perfect. That machine control allows the loader operator to keep that bench height exactly where it needs to be per the mine design, which is very neat. And then one other thing, if this was a loader digging in rock all day at a quarry, this whole bucket would be armored and totally beat up. There's about 6,000 hours on this thing. It is original. They don't have to add a whole lot of steel to this bucket, do a lot of welding or work because the oil shale is so soft as it's digging in, it's not really wearing on this bucket at all. Back to the mine. Earlier, we checked out the actual oil shale mining, but now for the overburden operation. Yep, you saw that right. Three 6030 front shovels working together on the same bench. I have never seen anything like it. To prepare for the oil shale mining, they have to strip all the overburden. This is the overburden operation. There are three 6030 shovels all loading simultaneously, which is pretty surreal to see three front shovels all on the same bench loading 100 ton trucks. They're hauling the overburden out of here. They're cutting this down a few levels to get to that oil shale. Beautiful. the oil shale formed was this was an ancient ocean they can tell based on the history of this area and by boulders like that that are rounded rounded rocks I mean there was water here at some point tumbling those to smooth the edges and then when the ocean left it it left all of this organic matter behind which is what formed the oil shale that they're mining today we're here at overlook Looking out over the mine right now, and you can see at the bottom, the two bottom layers are dark, black, gray. That's the oil shell, that's the good stuff. Everything above that, the lighter brown, is the overburden that they're stripping with the front shovels we just saw down to that oil shale. They're blasting all of that oil shale. Those PC850 excavators are pulling at that wall to to break down that wall and get the bigger boulders out. And then those WA900s are loading the 100 ton trucks, hauling right to the crusher. So you can see from here, all, all of the mine, and then where exactly the oil shale is versus the overburden. It's really nice. 